Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Um, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm a little bit sick. Nothing too severe, just a little bit of a cough and uh, a little bit of stuffy nose, so just like a cold. Um, so now everything's fine, but I think I have to blame it on the weather, guys. Um, we have a temp temperature contrast to the week before from 80s to 40s. Right now we're at 41 degrees. It is miserable. I mean, downright miserable. For the past five, six days, not a minute of sunshine. The w amount of rain we have been getting, I want to show you this quickly, guys, is absolutely ridiculous. Past five days, May 27th through May 2nd, look at those amounts. We live a little bit north of Chicago, right in that area. Four to six inches of rain. Guys, that is, that is, that is what, it's, that's the wettest week in Chicago since October 27th, uh, October 2017. Five inches of rain in O'Hare. I mean, this is just sick. I, you know, rain is good, but there definitely is too much of a good thing. We have been seeing so much rain, no sun at all. I've been sick. I stayed home from school today because I was just miserable in the morning. And, of course, there's the, the conditions outside are even more miserable than I am. And that's, you know, the, the weather does impact your feelings and does impact how you feel immensely. Right now, if you're asking to how I feel, I feel down. I don't feel that good. But I know you don't have to go, you know, in the comment sections trying to cheer me up because this is always what happens when the weather is so miserable for the past week, you know, for a week straight when there's no sun. What else do you expect? Uh, yeah, no, but everything else is going fine. Um, thank you for your recent support. I've been getting a couple of subscribers. Thank you guys so much for that. Uh, if you want to continue supporting this channel, if you're new, consider subscribing. Uh, it's a great way to support this channel. So, the... Unfortunately, there's some good news and some bad news. So if you want more rain, there will be more rain. Um, but it's not going to be nearly as bad as what you've been seeing. There are going to be warmer days on the way. And I know that a lot of the country has been pretty warm right now. I mean, look at these some of these temperatures right now. Ohio, Indiana, uh, a lot of these places are warm. But, you know, it's not... It's kind of localized. It's mainly in the southeast. The north isn't too warm. Neither is the war uh, northwest. But, uh, you know, definitely not unheard of. This is about typical, a little bit below average conditions for May. But we see warmer conditions. We see a high pressure um, zoom in through the country, gets into the plains, and <clears throat> we see it take control and warm things definitely, warm things immensely. So you can see Saturday. Looks like a fairly nice day for most of the country, maybe a little bit to the north, North Dakota, Montana, some chillier conditions. Majority of the country very warm. Look at some of these temperatures right here, South Carolina, North Carolina, 90s possible. So very warm conditions, and that is good. Everything will start growing. We finally have some warm conditions. There's nothing worse than seven days of rain with no sun and 40 degree temperatures. I'd much rather for it to be snow, if you were to ask me. I'd, I'd just rain, when it, cold rain is the worst. And look at this, we start seeing warmer temperatures, and we see another cool off for the north, but uh, the southeast is a little bit warmer again. And, you know, you may see, feel like this will stay around for a couple of days. Well, look, it starts warming up, the colder ridge starts breaking up, we get back into the 70s, 60s for a lot of areas. But uh, still, I would say slightly below average at the very least. Um, definitely some cooler conditions, not nothing, you know, incredibly too warm. If you look at the 8 to, uh, yeah, 8 to 14 day outlook, 10th through the 16th, they're still showing below average for the central part of the country, above average for the southeast, and above average for the west. And precipitation, look at it, still above average. Let's go to 6 to 10 day outlook. Um, they are even more confident at being below average for May 8th through 12th, and today is m May 2nd, so quite a bit of below average conditions to uh, await us if this comes true. And in precipitation probability, look at this, very warm and uh, very uh, moist and rainy, especially for the Southwest. So not good news at all for those that want uh, nicer weather. However, um, you know, we just gotta take the what we have. I, I think that this summer might be a, a nice warm summer, but it may be also a very rainy summer. Summers are even harder to predict than, uh, than winters. And the reason for that is, for winters, at least you have things like El Nino, the ENSO, the, 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 what, oh my god, I forgot, the NAO, the, all those big factors that are, whether they're positive, negative, in this phase or that phase, they impact the winter in some sort of way. Summer, though, it's so radical, so irrational, like, it's, it's just so, it's heated, and it's, the pattern is very unpredictable, so... I can't really talk much about this upcoming summer, but I can talk for the next, you know, two to three weeks what will 
likely occur, and what is going to likely occur is a drastic warming. Um, even though May isn't usually the biggest warming month for many, this winter has been so downright cold, and the spring has been so downright cold, that uh, we haven't seen a lot of warming in uh, April or March, at least for a lot of the northern central country, part of the country. But for May, I think a lot of the United States will finally, a lot of people will finally experience their first 70s and 80s, and possibly even 90s. So uh, I think this month will be a great month of change um, towards positivity in terms of the weather uh, aspect. But, um, I just see a blue jay out my window. There's just a giant blue jay. Well, sorry, that just caught me off guard. Uh, I wanted to show you also just the, just the, what the weather panel will look like in the next um, couple of days. So, I remember how I, this video will probably be titled, like, um, very rainy pattern to continue, something like that. And look, so right now we have this low, you know, producing some rain across. There's a severe thunderstorm warning for Washington, D.C. as I speak right now, around 3 o'clock. And then, um, we... We see uh, another potential system developing right here. It stays mainly to the south, but still brings quite a bit of rainy weather for uh, the, the, the south. Okay, I'm um, sorry. There's something screaming at my window. I think it's the same blue jay. Um, but, okay, so uh, the southeast, the northeast, will be seeing some rainy conditions while the Midwest finally gets a chance to dry out. But then Monday, uh, we see another system develop. You can see a pretty prolonged system. So a lot of these areas I've been seeing a lot of rain. We'll see more rain. Look at this. Monday it all begins. It develops in the Rockies, drops down, brings loads and loads of rain. So from Monday all the way through Friday, I would say. Very heavy rainfall. Then more rain. It's just a very, very wet pattern. Um, more, uh, just more above average in terms of precip. Let's go to, uh, I wanted to show you how much, you know, how much precip will actually fall to give you a uh, justice for this. And you can see next 300... 84 hours, 84 hours we see uh, quite a bit of rain, especially towards the south. You see uh, many locations seeing above a foot of rain if this model were to come, if, you know, if this model was right and accurate. Um, will this be 100% right? I don't know, but I know that for a fact that these locations don't need to see a lot of more rain in order to produce more flash flooding. They've been already so saturated that... Even if half of this rain were to fall, which is forecasted right now at um, over a foot, even if six inches fell, plenty enough to produce flash floodings. Um, and it, it, I already showed you the temperatures. We could go to the two meter temperature anomalies, which basically show us whether it's above or below average. And you can see that's told towards the end of the forecasting period, a little bit of uh, uh, above average. But I want to show you what the past 72 hours have been looking like like for the northern part of the United States. I know the south has been fairly warm, and there's a pretty explanation for that. Very simple. Um, there's just been these lows. Oh, that's a bad color. Blue on blue doesn't really match, does it? Let's go to yellow. There's been a low right there. It's been sending up plumes of moisture, and along with these plumes of moisture, warm air has been coming up. And anywhere, I would say, south of southern Illinois, southern Indiana, southern Ohio, central Missouri, you've been warm. And you probably will continue to be warm as this weather pattern seems to continue, maybe not with so much vigor and with such regularity, but still, you, know, you can see that these below average conditions persisted through uh, a lot of the, you know, what happened past week, and this is what happened, this is what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, this is Friday, you can see Friday, May 3rd, the southeast, still staying warm, a little bit cooler across the central, but, uh, across the central part of the country, but not extreme. And then we see a little bit of warming, you can see the pattern breaks, still chilly to the north, and uh, then uh, we could see a pretty nice blast of cold air right there, but we will have to see how that forms. Again, during the summer, these things, summer and spring, these uh, events, these phases, these troughs and ridges are very hard to predict. It basically depends on where the storm sets up. And you can see warm conditions for a couple of days for sure next week. This is Wednesday, uh, Thursday. And then we see another blast of chillier air, but it's not as prolonged. You can see a couple of days later, the warm air comes in, overpowers that. We see another blast, but then we see more, more warm air. So it's not going to be over, overall as miserable as, as it has been. I mean, look at these past 72 hours. Cold and cold and cold. Uh, now it should start warming up, so definitely not nearly as bad as it, um, as, as it was. Uh, that's basically all I just wanted to go over. I could show you a uh, windy.com. That is a the that is a website. It's a great website. This is the website I use to um, forecast the or this is what I use the European model on. And this is the only website that has a free European model that's actually you know user uh, face friendly. And okay, the video will stop in a couple of seconds because I'm going over ten minutes, so I apologize for that.
And I think we're back on. So this is a snowfall according to the uh, European model. You can see not much. Obviously, it's already May, but they're still showing some across Minnesota and Wisconsin, which is just, uh, you know, a little bit concerning. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised to see that since this has been so rainy. And then look, next 10 days, European model still showing quite a darn bit of rain, especially towards the south. So they've been agreeing with that, um, with the GFS, a very wet, rainy pattern. And it doesn't seem to be... I'm stopping and look at that up to the north not that much but down to the south quite a bit that's when the Gulf of Mexico is waking up a lot of more moisture is coming through the Gulf of Mexico and we're seeing more, much more moisture to fuel these thunderstorms bringing more rain so thank you guys so much for watching consider subscribing to this channel consider liking this video and I need to get some rest thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you guys in the next episode